I got a new song. And I've been playing the song now about six weeks. And uh, what I'd like to do before I play the song is give you a little context of the song because I think it's easily misinterpreted. Um, the song is a protest song. Uh, remember those? We used to have those things. And it's a, it's a song that criticizes or asks questions about our strategy for the withdrawal of Afghanistan. Um, and I'd like to tell you where the song came from. And I hope that you listen to it. Um, like all of us, I think we were kind of horrified by the initial images out of Afghanistan. Yes. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the people falling from airplanes, the mothers handing their babies over barbed wire, all that stuff. But as we've already talked about, um, for me, uh, the song really didn't start becoming something until our 13 soldiers were killed and the 100 Afghans and a suicide bombing. Like, like many of you, I felt rage. I didn't know what to do. I started banging on my piano just for a cathartic release. I, I still had really no intention of writing a song. I didn't know why I would or what it would say. Um, but the song really formed a few days after our troops left. I got a call from a friend who I talk to every day. Uh, she's an amazing person, does incredible humanitarian work around the world. And I hadn't heard for a while, and she said, hey, I need a, a contact, and I, I gave her a contact of a friend of a friend. I said, well, what, what are you doing? What's going on? And she said, uh, I'm organizing evacs of AMSITs from Afghanistan. And me being me, just some singer dude, I said, what's an AMSIT? And she said, American citizen. And there was silence on the line, and I said to her, you're telling me you're risking your life and your colleagues' lives to go to Afghanistan and rescue people, our citizens that we left behind? Yes. Yeah. And that's what she said. She said yes, and I was, I didn't know what universe I was living in. <laughs> I, how could that be happening? So that night I started writing a few lines of this song, and then um, the song finished itself after the president gave his uh, extraordinary success speech. Um, I think a lot of us didn't understand that. Um, but as somebody who, who has great respect for military, I've spent my whole life playing for our troops, I love our troops, I expected our general to get I mean, and there's, a reason, there's a reason I say that. Because I've always expected that if, if things get really bad, you know, our presidents say stupid things from both parties. Let's be honest. We saw that last round, we see it this round. But I've always expected that if, our, if, our, if things got really bad, that our generals would be the adults in the room. And I expected General Milley and General Austin to come out and clarify that extraordinary success. And they did not. They basically parroted the same political narrative of what a great airlift we have. And that scared me. That scared me, not just for Afghanistan, but for the next foreign policy crisis. And that night those lines wrote themselves. So I wrote this song, I put it out. Every time I play this song, I say something I think, not only true, but think, think you should put in the back of your mind when you listen to it. If Donald Trump were a Republican were president, I'd write the same song. Only the names would change. To me, it's a moral issue. Right. It's not a political issue. It's not. No man left behind is not a political issue. Every day, I talk to people on the ground. There are still, two months later, many Americans left, many SIV holders, Tens of thousands of Afghan allies who fought next to our soldiers sometimes gave their lives for our soldiers being hunted by the Taliban. There are people here tonight that are working on those evacuations. It's like 9-11. Remember 9-11 taught us that the real heroes are the people we don't know their faces? Those people that ran into those buildings? Tonight next to you, there are some of those heroes. In the darkest time in, I, in, in my lifetime for our country, foreign policy-wise, there are some of the bright, shining lights that nobody knows that are keeping America's promise. So I wanted to write a song that spoke to that. And as we are here on Veterans Day, when I initially wrote the song, my mission was twofold. Keep the focus on America, America's promise, 
keep the focus on Afghanistan, try to hold the Taliban as accountable as possible, and also call for accountability. But it's evolved. Because when I started playing after my sets, after moments like this, many vets would come up to me, particularly Afghan vets. And many of them could not talk. They were angry, they were ashamed. Suicide hotline went nuts. It's not a happy Veterans Day this year. It's not. It's a sad one for what they're going through. And I think it's important that they feel they're not alone. Yes. This is not a critique of any party. It's a plea to do the right thing and to admit our complicity. Because if you can't admit your complicity, number one, you'll make the same mistake again and you'll never be able to atone for it. So I would like to dedicate this song to all our Afghan veterans who did the right thing yes. They serve honorably. They serve for their fellow soldier next to them. And we love them and their sacrifice was not in vain. God blood on my hand. God blood on my hands. And I don't understand. What's happening? There's blood on these hands. They're still Americans. The left of the Taliban. The BBB. How's that happening? This will defend your sacred motto now means never mind. And got blood on my hands. Got blood on my hands. The flag of the Taliban. Can you spell Bob Room without the letters in blame? Did Uncle Joe stick a drip in your veins? And, and I can hear her scream If she's not, she's not She's not on TV He's not, he's not, he's not on TV. To every Afghan ally that we left behind, every shadow of the freedom faces covered and blind is for this American promise. Now, shit in the fire.